to look how we can plot map points on the Google Maps API and also render some info windows with associated data. So to get started on our stores resource, I'll just create a collection and then get map. And this will provide a endpoint map stores, which will just reference to the stores and then map endpoint. And in this view, it'll just be a header tag and then also a div with an ID of map. And then in the application.js file, we can create a document on TurboLink's load, and then we'll put some stuff within this function. And we will only want to execute this if the map ID is present. And it is important to know that for this episode, you will need to use the API key. So check out my previous episode on the geocoding to see how you can register and get a API key, and we'll be using the Google Maps JavaScript API. And I'm just going to sort the API key in my template here. And this is under the views layouts application.html.erb. So I'll create a meta tag with the name Google Maps. And I'll set the content to the Google Maps API key that I got from the developer Google console. And you may want to move the API key into a environment variable or into your rail secrets. And keep in mind in the previous episode of the geocoding, we did discuss the restrictions of the API key. And I highly recommend that you do that because you do want to make sure that you lock this down. So you're only giving access to those browsers who should have access, meaning that we would lock it down at the domain level. So anyone from a different domain name wouldn't be able to use your API key to access the maps. So once you have the API key created, we can fetch it within our if block and we'll just set it to a variable Google Maps. So we'll get the meta tag with the name Google Maps, and then we'll get the content. And then we can call get script and then reference the Google Maps API. And notice I am using the back tick here, and that's because I'm using some interpolation with the Google Maps API key. And do take note that we are passing this parameter callback and then init map. And this is going to be a JavaScript function that once its script is initialized, it will call the init map. So already we have when the turbo links is loaded, if the map is present, then we will get the script. And because we have this block of code after our required tree, then we would already have this init map loaded. So we know at the point of pulling and running the script that the init map function will already exist. So once the JavaScript file is done processing, it'll call the init map, and then we'll perform our necessary functions on the map. So within our stores.coffeescript file, we can create an init map global function. And within here, we'll first set a starting value of a center with a latitude of zero and a longitude of zero. And then we can use the maps API. So we'll set our maps equals to a new object of the Google Maps map. And then we'll reference our div tag. So here we're getting our div element and we're selecting the first one, which there should only be one. We're sending a default zoom of two, and then we're setting the center to the center of the latitude zero, longitude zero. So if we were to visit stores maps now, you'll see that you have rendered out the map successfully. Back in our coffee script file, we can then set it up to pull some data from the server side. And to get the data, we're just going to call a get JSON, and then we're going to pass in the index action of our stores, and then we're going to reference the format JSON. And then we'll get our response and this will be bundled into the JSON data. And then we'll loop through each one of the JSON datas. So we would expect this to be an array. We can then create a new latitude longitude equals to a new Google Maps latitude longitude. And then we can just pass in the data.lat and the data.long. And again, this is referencing from the data that we got from our source JSON. We can then create a new marker and then we'll just call the new Google Maps marker. And then we'll set the position to the latitude longitude that we got from our JSON. We'll reference our map. And then we'll give this point a title. And to generate the JSON data, I'm going to use a index JSON. And then we'll be using just the default JBuilder. So we can loop through each one of our stores with a JSON array. And Google Maps does expect the latitude and longitude to be abbreviated. So we'll have our JSON.lat equal to the store latitude, and then the JSON long equal to the store longitude. And then we can set our title to the store name. And so going back to our stores maps, if we refresh the page, we can then see we have a bunch of points on there. And if we hover over the points, 
you can see that we get the tooltip, and the tooltip is the title or the name of the store. However, it would be really nice if we could click on one of these markers and then get the hours of operations of that store. So to do this, back in our coffee script file, we can create a new info window variable, and we'll set this to a new Google Maps info window. And we're setting it like this because whenever we click on one of the windows, we want it to automatically clear or close out another window that was selected. And then when we're looping through each one of our markers, we can create a listener event to when the marker is clicked, and this is referencing to the marker within this loop, we can then perform the following function. So when the marker is clicked, then we'll set the window options to the data content, and we'll set this to a max width of 300, and then we'll call the window to be opened, referencing the map and the marker. And this is going to work because we are dynamically setting the content each time that the marker is clicked on. And this way, we only have the one info window object, and we're just replacing what goes inside. So then we need to set this content in our index J builder. So in the JSON array, we can set the JSON content equal to the store controller render, and then we'll call squish on here to minimize any kind of JavaScript anomalies. And within here, we can call the partial and then the store stores. So we'll render this store partial. And then we can pass in the locals, the store to store. So we'll have access to the store variable within our partial. And then we'll need to set the format to HTML. And within the store partial, we're just listing out the store name hours of operation, and then we're looping through each one of these store operation hours, and then we're just listing out the day and then the hours that that store is open. So the text that's actually getting displayed here is not really important for this episode, but just so you know that we have this enumerator on day, and it's just each day of the week, and then we have this method hours, where we just check a Boolean if the store is closed on a particular day, then we just have the word closed, Otherwise, we would then list out the start and stop time. So going back to our application now, we can refresh. And then we can click on some of these points. And then you can see that we have our store name, hours of operation, and then each day of the week when the store is open and closed. And we can check out some of the other ones. And you can see that it closes each info window as we click on another marker. And keep in mind that this is just random generated data. So there are some markers just in some funny and weird places. And keep in mind that we are calling the operation hours within our index. It's just getting rendered as a JSON. So you may want to optimize this to include the operation hours. So it'll all go into one query so you can avoid a M plus one. And I highly recommend that if you did not see the functionality that you need with the Google Maps API, then to check out their documentation because it is very good and the examples that they give are very minimalistic. So you should be able to decipher what they're doing and then be able to add it into your own application. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.